Hi everybody and welcome to the TensorFlow Cafe at the TensorFlow Developer Summit. Alex Passos, who was here, is from the Eager team and he was at the summit talking about Eager. So Alex, welcome. Wow, thank you. So how was your talk? I think uh, Eager Execution is super interesting, like this new way of using TensorFlow that's a lot more intuitive, Pythonic and object-oriented and I think friendly. And I don't know, people seemed excited to hear about it. A lot of developers that I've chatted with, like getting to understand the graph-based mode was a little bit of a bump for them to get over. So then having Eager and the, like you say, more Pythonic way of doing it, it certainly makes it easier for them. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard mental model. It can be, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it can be a little hard of a mental model to write code that builds a graph that then runs. Just shortcutting this to just write code that runs is a, lot, a much friendlier experience. And once your code is working, it usually just builds a graph automatically. Like, you, once your code is working with bigger execution, you can flip a switch and it will build a graph without errors. So it's a, it's a much like smoother way to approach the whole process. If you does, it, does it make like the concept of like prototyping, testing, prototyping, testing, does it make that a little bit easier, do you think? Yeah, definitely. Because you can, you also, it's not as if it has to be a prototype if you're using eager execution. You can get really good performance. Like one of my slides talked about how in ResNet models and like, LSTM models with the right kernels, you have as good performance as you have with graph execution. So it's not, by this I don't mean we're creating a little prototype playground, no, this is a serious framework you can use to do your real development, but it's also much easier to play around in. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And I, I think for somebody coming into learning to build TensorFlow stuff, I find it's an easier way for them to get started because it's more familiar. Yeah, definitely, like, especially if you've done any kind of playing around with almost any machine learning library before. You've probably interacted with R or with Python, with NumPy, and those things have this very interactive, like, build as you go, inspect as you go development style, and that's, you can replicate that one-to-one -one on TensorFlow with eager execution. Right. So it's very intuitive to go from where you are now to, like, taking the same methods and applying them to larger, interesting convolutional or recurrent networks or recursive networks or all these like cool other models that people are super excited about these days. Ego's just taken a big step, right? It's moved from contrib to the core of TensorFlow. Yes, yeah, so so. we just graduated Ego execution into TensorFlow core in TF 1.7. And this is a strong statement from us that we're happy with the Ego execution API as it stands. Like we think enable Ego execution, gradient tape, those symbols have moved to core, they're here to stay, and they're gonna be supported forever with all the like API stability and guarantees that come with TensorFlow. We see Eager as now being a core part of the TensorFlow experience and something that most of our users are gonna interact with at one point or another in a way that will hopefully make them much more productive and happier. And I, I actually like the way you said that's a sign of our confidence in Eager that we've done that. So that, that's really true, and I never thought about it that way. It's, it's kind of cool. And one of the things you said in your talk, you were talking about like um, how if somebody wants to write Eager-compatible code and how they want to optimize it, that kind of stuff. You gave some guidance. Could, could you talk through that a little bit? For your code to work well in Eager, you want your code to be written in a Pythonic and object-oriented style. Right. Uh, Graph TensorFlow is a little more flexible and lets you write your code in a way that involves a lot of action at a distance, uh -huh. which can be super powerful if you know what you're doing and if you're an expert with the tools, but also can be a little hard to approach. So if for you to write code that's going to work well with eager execution turned on, and also when you're building a graph, it helps if you avoid some of that action at a distance and some of the global state that TensorFlow has, and just write more straightforward, object-oriented code. So things like when you're using layers, TensorFlow has these two set, parallel sets of layers APIs, one that's a little more functional and one that's a little more object-oriented. Mm -hmm. And the object-oriented layers, please use those if you're building your model of execution. But once you use those, it just translates naturally to building graphs. Nice. Uh, same thing if you're like building a model. Just if you're using functional layers, you might sometimes don't even have a model class in your code. Uh, have one. Make it inherit from TF.Karazov model, which is a well-tested model class. It has lots of utilities to help you save, load, train your model. Right. It will save you a lot of work. It won't force you to do anything. But if you use its tools, it's going to work perfectly well with eager execution and also perfectly well on building graphs. So these are like big things about how you build your model directly. But there's a lot more to making and training a machine learning model than just your model building code. And uh, 
sadly, the tf.summary package is not compatible with bigger execution. So we're making a new uh, summary package, which is now available in Contrib, but it will soon move into TensorBoard. And this new summary package is compatible with both eager execution and graph building. Nice. And similarly, the metrics in tf.metrics, they are not compatible with eager execution because they were written in this very powerful like action at a distance way that depends on graph pruning for correctness. So we're introducing a new metrics package that is works well in both eager and graph. Right. So as long as you like stick to the nice object-oriented user-friendly APIs, you're going to have high performance, easy to read code that's going to be developable in eager and then deployable in graph or even deployable in eager if you're cool. willing to deploy to a Python environment. So apart from watching your talk, uh, what advice would you give for somebody wanting to get uh, started in eager? So we have a, our TensorFlow Programmer's Guide on the website. If you go on tensorflow.org and click on Programmer's Guide, as of today, it should have a chapter on eager execution. And it's really nice. It introduces you to TensorFlow, to eager execution, lets you like play around with it, shows you all the key pieces, right. all the tools you have at your disposal. I strongly recommend anyone who is interested to just go and play around with that chapter in the Programmer's Guide. It has a link to a notebook that gives you like a step-by-step -step tools to like play around and grow. So I've played with that notebook. It's really cool. Yeah, right? It's so intuitive. You go and you press, and you can change things, and you can see how they work. I I think Eager plays really well with notebooks and that interactive development style and testing style. Right. Which, you know, our platform for notebooks, the uh, Google Colab, also gives anyone access to a GPU kernel. So you can I even know. get the high performance GPU training for a few hours for free. Yeah, if on, you're the interested Colab, right? on the Colab, right? On the Colab, yeah. Yep. It's uh, super cool. So thank you so much, Alex. That's, uh, oh, it's been a lot much. of fun. I've, I've been really eager to have this conversation, <laughs> so I had to get that joke in. So. And thanks, everybody, for watching this episode. If you've got any questions for me or if you have any questions for Alex, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.